United with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors, serving throughout the Border Valley community, and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation by KSE Channel 38 Christian Television. And now, United with Christ. Well, good morning. We are so glad that you've joined with us here this morning at KSEE, and uh, we're going to have a great time together, we hope, for the next half hour or so. Uh, my name is Jim Cleveland. I'm the worship pastor at First Baptist Church, and so we're going to spend this uh, half hour kind of talking about our church and about our ministries and uh, some special things that are going on in our church this year. And uh, we thank you for kind of listening in. We hope you enjoy it and it'll help you kind of understand uh, a little more about worship maybe today and uh, about First Baptist and our involvement in the community and how we can maybe minister to you. So thank you for being with us today. Let me introduce our guests today. I have three beautiful ladies to my left and uh, we are so glad that they're here today to talk about our ministry and their involvement in it. This is Melanie Nahara. Melanie has uh, been a part of our church for a long, long time. And she's a decorator, has her own decorating business here in El Paso. And we're so glad that uh, she's with us today. Next to her is Dagmar Nichols. Uh, Dagmar uh, is a shy little flower who uh, <laughs> is uh, very integral in our ministry. Uh, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. But Dagmar works for the Convention and Visitors Bureau here in El Paso. She's got uh, her logo on her shirt today. And uh, she's a very vital part of what goes on in our community. And so we're thankful for that. Uh, to her left is Esther Leal. Esther is a part of our choir and our worship ministry. And uh, she's a wonderful lady, a faithful, faithful gal in our church. So we're glad you're here, ladies. Thank, Thank you for, you. for being here. Thank you. Uh, let, me, let me just kind of share with the folks at home uh, kind of what our worship ministry is all about. Uh, as we come together together, to, uh, to praise the Lord and to enjoy Him, particularly on Sundays, but all the time, we hope. Uh, the, uh, the music part of that uh, is so vitally important. And uh, folks like these ladies uh, and so many others in our church make worship uh, more of a corporate experience as well as an individual experience. Let me read a couple of scriptures to you. Uh, the first one is from the 12th chapter of Romans. And this is kind of our marching orders as people of God and uh, sort of a theme verse for me. But, but Paul wrote, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. This is our obligation. This is our task as people of God is to worship the Lord primarily first. That was uh, uh, the great commission, is the, the great commandment, is to love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul. And so we feel like that's really important for us as individuals and as worship leaders at First Baptist Church. Uh, the second part of that verse, the second verse, gives you the corollary of what happens when you do that. It says, don't be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Well, if we uh, allow God to come in and fill us and to then to express to Him our praise and our worship to Him, uh, then that allows our minds, our whole bodies to be transformed so that we can become vessels. And I think you ladies would agree with me that that's a Absolutely. pretty important thing. Absolutely. So we're thankful for that. There's another scripture back in the end of Hebrews uh, as the writer is beginning to kind of pull everything together. There are two scriptures. One of them is right at the end of chapter 12 where it said, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and worship God uh, acceptably with reverence and with awe because God is our consuming fire. And then right to, in the very next chapter, he sort of completes that thought by saying, So through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of of lips that confess His name. And so that's, uh, that's what we hope to be about. We're obviously uh, always falling short, but we are always looking to try to do our very best to confess our, with our lips and to be a sacrifice of praise. Now sacrifices, just by the nature of that word, don't get to do what they want to do. Sacrifices do what the sacrificer wants them to do. And he says, I want you to bring a, a sacrifice of praise that the, that the words on your 
lips and the meditations of your heart are confessing to Him all the time. So that's what we're about. That's what these ladies are about. That's what our worship ministry is about. And we're so grateful for that. Uh, when we say a worship ministry at First Baptist Church, uh, we're really talking about several entities that comprise that. One of them is our sanctuary choir. And all three of these ladies are part of that ministry uh, as well as others. We also have a praise team ministry. Uh, our church has two different kinds of worship on Sunday morning. At 9 o'clock, we gather for a more contemporary setting where we sing uh, praise, see, praise songs, contemporary worship songs with a band and with a praise team. And uh, Dagmar is part of that. We'll talk about that here in just a moment. We also have an orchestra that accompanies our later service at 1115 where we have more of a traditional setting with piano and organ and choir and uh, do uh, lots of hymns and those kind of things and wonderful sacred uh, gospel and, and uh, choral music. And uh, so these la all three of these ladies are part of that ministry. Uh, we have a children's choir ministry that meets throughout the school year. Uh, we have a ladies' ensemble uh, of about uh, 12 ladies that minister and meet regularly and sing part of our worship and do special events. Uh, Esther's part of that group. And uh, so we'll talk about all those in just a moment. But uh, we're so thankful that we can do that, number one, that God's allowed us to be standing in leadership and that we have the opportunity to work with folks like this when we, uh, when we do worship. So we're thankful for that. We kind of have a little motto that we, uh, it's on our wall in the choir room, uh, and it says, would you like to be one of them? T-H-E-M. The T is for teamwork. The H is for history. The E is for excellence. And the M is for mission. We feel like we work together as a team. We strive uh, for excellence in everything we do. We have a great history. Our church has had wonderful uh, ministry in our community for a long, long time. In fact, I have a copy of a book. Our church just came out with a new history book uh, last year called A Stronghold of Faith, A History of the First Baptist Church of El Paso. Our church was founded in 1882. So we're more than 130 years old. When the railroad came to town, it opened up the opportunity for people to come. And uh, there was a great opportunity there for Christians to, uh, to start churches. And there was a lot of Baptist folks that said, you know what, we need a great Baptist church in El Paso. So our church started in. This is the story of the history of how that happened right up through 2012. Uh, so uh, this is available in our church. I'll give a shameless plug for our book while I'm here. Uh, it's about 15 bucks, but we'd love to love to have you have one of those if you'd like. You can call the, amen. call the church office. And a lot of the things that we're talking about today are in that book. So we thank you for doing that. Uh, uh, a lot of these folks sing in our, our uh, sanctuary choir. Melanie's one of those. Tell me how you came to be part of our choir. Oh, gosh. Um, to be honest, I probably am not your best singer oh, in the choir. <laughs> oh, come on. I tease this high, the sopranos that I hide amongst uh. all the better, <laughs> the better singers. But I can carry a tune. In fact, I at one time sang with Sweet Adelines. Uh, and yeah. uh, yes, mm -hmm. many years ago. But um, I'm more of a folk singer. And, um, but I love to sing uh, traditional singing for um, the choir. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I realized that you don't have to have the greatest voice, but carry a tune, mm -hmm. uh, I joined the choir back in 1998. Wow. So, so um, 16 years. Yes, 16 yes, 16 years. years I, and I absolutely love it, Jim. Uh, and you have been a marvelous uh, director. I've thoroughly yeah. enjoyed yeah. working with you. You're, uh, um, you've, I've learned so much through uh, you, Jim. Mm. And uh, only not just working with you in the m music end of it, but you've also been such a good minister mm -hmm. in the Word. Mm -hmm through what you have presented uh, in the... Well, you're very kind. Uh, Melanie is one of those folks. If you watch our program, we're on KSCE on um, uh, Channel 38 on Sunday mornings at 8 o'clock, and you will often see all of these ladies on the, the telecast, which is actually a composite recording of the previous Sunday's uh, services that we do together. But you'll notice, Melanie, I love, I love her spirit. I love her smile. That's right. Uh, 
and uh, she's so faithful and uh, always there and always involved and singing with all her heart and so we think we're thankful for (laughs) that Um, uh, let me go down to the end esther tell me about you you have not been in our church a real long time tell me how you came to be part of our church and our choir well in 2011 i joined the singing christmas tree a friend told me and i just enjoyed it so much i loved it and Jim gave me a lovely solo to sing in that. And then uh, a few Beautiful. months later, I came and joined the church. I thought this was the place for me because I mm-hmm. love the music ministry and the word and all. And mm-hmm. I just, now I'm in Grace Notes too, another ensemble of mm-hmm. the ladies. And I just love that too. Enjoy yeah. that a lot, singing for the Lord. Yeah. Amen. So Tell us about your experience it. with Grace Notes. With Grace Notes, it was an opening, I guess, a few months ago. And, um, you know, we just came, a friend of our, another lady, and we came and joined it. And I think it's about 12 of us now in it. Mm-hmm. And we just love singing. I just sing for the Lord, and I love to sing solos in it. And we just harmonize so well, and we just it's love beautiful. it. It's just a beautiful experience, yeah. Well, good. So, and Amen. I try to get involved in everything, singing yeah. Christmas tree, whatever we need. Let's go. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's right. Well, you do. Yeah, you do. do. And not only is she so faithful in yeah. the choir, but uh, if we have a task, that needs to be done. In fact, I tried to give her one this morning back at the office. <laughs> but uh, she's always so so yeah. uh, ready to help yeah. us if it's a matter of, yeah. of filing music or, Anything, or putting yeah. out letters or any of those kind of I'll things. Just get so, a phone call. Can you come down? Sure, I'll be there tomorrow. You know <laughs> Esther has a great, a great yeah. humble servant heart, and we're yeah. we're so thankful for that. And Dagmar. Uh, you're you're just kind of part of everything down there. Aren't well, you? yeah. She's in the choir. She's in our praise team. Tell me about your praise team experience. How did that happen in your life? I don't even know how that happened. I'm, I'll just tell you, when you sing, when you belong to the Lord Jesus, when He lives in your heart, everything is a melody. Everything is a song <laughs> that He would choose you to carry His word through song, through the written word, through however, how can you not sing about this awesome Jesus? Amen. Praise team, um, I have to agree with Melanie, and you're not going to like it, but <laughs> Jim really, like it. Uh, yeah, Jim is one of those that you just want to please, yes. you know, after <laughs> Jesus, you just want to please. <laughs> he, he's so accommodating, thoughtful, and when you're singing praise music, and the Holy Spirit grabs a hold of you and you start to do runs or fills or raise your He lets you do it. It doesn't have to be the sung word. Thank you for that, Jim, that you give the singers and musicians the liberty to be able to sing from their heart. That's right. Uh, some people clap real quiet. Some people don't. I'm not the most ladylike person up there, <laughs> but um, I'm telling you, uh, praise team just fits my husband Randy and I to a T. And uh, we love the living Christmas tree. We started singing in our, ch- our living room. We held church for four and a half years. We started singing. We don't even know how we started singing together. And then uh, we started harmonizing. And we didn't know how that happened except Jesus, you know, Mm -hmm. and then we did prison ministries. We did that for four and a half years and they liked it. So, um, (laughs) you know, when the Lord gives you something, you got to use it. That's what you had a captured audience then. Well, you (laughs) you know, they didn't have to come in there, but, um, that band and that ministry, we saw a lot of people on their knees. They had teardrops under their eye. They were in gangs. But by the time the ministry was done, so many people got saved and were great fathers when they left that prison to their children. So um, the praise team is awesome. We rotate. We have a a great band. Oh, my goodness. Under, again, the direction of Jim. Thank you, Jim. And all the singers and the soloists. We do Chris Tomlin music. We do all kinds of things. And we also do scripture made a little bit more contemporary and i like that Mm -hmm. i I like that so i'm just very happy that number one that i'm a born again christian i have jesus in my heart as us three musketeers right here (laughs) and uh so um i'm just happy i'm just happy my mother was an opera singer she studied uh, mezzo soprano coloratura did not like my voice because Uh i didn't have that high voice Uh and um I don't read music like Melanie, but uh, you know what? Bible says make a joyful noise, and that's what we do, right, babe? That's right. So anyway, so. That's right. But one of the things 
she kind of touched on that a minute ago, and this is not about me or any of us mm -mm. here, but Lord. one of the things that I appreciate about our choir and about our musicians is that we really strive to be able to convey the understanding of the text of what we're singing. Exactly. Right. That the heart of the music is uh, is what we want to convey. So I'm so thankful for these ladies. We're gonna we're gonna take a, a little bit of a break here. I want to show you a little video, and then we'll explain. Uh, what that's all about right after uh, we see this. So watch the video and then we'll be right back. Welcome back. Uh, that was a, an example of uh, a special program that we have here at First Baptist Church and a very special recognition and uh, time this particular year. That was the uh, Living Christmas Tree program from our church from last year, 2013. Uh, this is a program that uh, we have done in our church this year for 50 years. We're marking our 50th anniversary of the Living Christmas Tree this year. And uh, we're going to have a special program. We're going to tell you about that over the next few moments. Uh, but uh, what a treat for us to be able to look back and say, you know what, God has blessed an offering that we do to the community for a half a century. Wow. That's, uh, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. So we're so grateful uh, for that. We're going to tell you a little bit more about this year's show, which is a little bit different, but uh, I think it's something you, you want to know about and participate in as we get closer to the Christmas season. We have an extra person that has uh, come and joined us today. This is Bill Wickline down on the end. Bill uh, is a longtime member of First Baptist Church. Church. How many years, Bill? It will be 50 years. 50 years, too. Wow. Well, you get to celebrate a lot of stuff this year, don't you? <laughs> Actually, 50 years next year, but still. This year is right. the 49th year. Oh, yeah, that's I was great. here to join the church in 1995. Wow, no. that's great. 45. 45. 45. No, 1965. We'll get it right. <laughs> it's in there somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere. 65 would be the right would be yeah, the right 65. year. Bill is a retired engineer and a great part of our faithful part of our choir and our ministry for so many years, and we're just so thankful for him. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about this Christmas tree program. Back in 1965, that very same year. Uh, our church had called a new youth minister, a young guy from Alabama uh, who had lots of ideas, lots of energy. And uh, one of the things that he wanted to do was to build a great youth choir ministry uh, in our church. And so uh, I don't know whether he'd seen it somewhere or the pastor had seen it. But anyway, they got together and said, you know what, let's try this living Christmas tree program. And what it amounted to was a big kind of a structure they built in the corner of the worship center 
and they stuck us kids up on it, uh, high school kids. I was actually privileged to be part of that very first living Christmas tree. We had one other person in our choir, K, uh, Baltzell, Patsy Baltzell, mm -hmm. who sang on the very first tree, who's still singing on the tree, by the way. And uh, they put about 70 of us up on this structure, very rickety kind of thing. We're standing there <laughs> holding Christmas lights in our hand. Uh, and we did uh, about an hour program uh, in 1965, and that was the very first living Christmas tree here in El Paso. John Preston was his name. Uh, he is still around and lives up in New Mexico, and we're hoping uh, that John Preston can be here uh, for our 50th anniversary program. Uh, what we're planning to do is to gather, we've already made inroads to try to gather all the people that ever sang in the show through the years and have them come back to El Paso if they possibly can and sing in a reunion program this year. We've already heard from about 125 that said they could come, and so we're excited about that and hope that they'll be able to do that and join us. There are six men who have directed this program through the years. John Preston was the first one, and then there have been five since then, counting me. Uh, and uh, we're hoping that all of those men can come back oh. and be part of this program as well. Oh, Isn't that neat? Uh, one of the oh. men is not in good health and probably can't come, but the other five of us we hope can be here, oh. and uh, we're going to kind of walk through the history and sing some songs that we've sung through the years mm -hmm. and have a great time. But uh, the Living Christmas Tree, back at some point, back about uh, 25 years ago, they, uh, they added uh, adults to the choir, and then they added an orchestra to the choir, and all of those things now are part of the program. We have about 160 mm -hmm. in the chorus last year, people from all over the community. It is a great time, yes. and we hope that you will, uh, even now, put that on your calendar mm -hmm. for December 12th, 13th, and no, 14th. 11th. Well, yeah. 11th is the dress rehearsal, oh, but okay. the 12th is actually the first show. Okay. Uh, we're going to do five programs this year, and we hope you'll come and join us oh. for the Living Christmas Tree. Bill, how many years have you sung on the tree? About 40 years. 40, 40 years. years. That's amazing. Wow. Uh, what, a, what a neat thing to have a legacy of all these mm -hmm. folks. You've seen a lot of changes on the tree well, through yes. the years, haven't you? It started off, we had a, a, a volunteer director, Bruce Brooks. And he was here, and and I came to this church, and uh, he was directing that, and I thought, wow, it's great to hear this one. And then the, the Living Christmas Tree started, and um, I saw it up there, and I said, well, gee, it should be nice if we could put us adults on the yeah. thing. And eventually we did. Yeah. And it's a great it's a great history huh. and legacy for our church. Uh, Esther, tell us your your impressions about the tree. Oh, I just love it. I came years ago to see it at a performance too, and uh, then when I joined it, and I it was just it was just takes your breath away. It's, well, and the ending with the Hallelujah chorus that just that's yeah. the finale. Oh. I mean, just jump I off the stage, on the cake. right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's we always sing yeah. the Hallelujah chorus. Yes, that's our wonderful. not necessarily the final song, but a, a, an important song in the program. We're going to do that just, again yeah. uh, this year as we gather folks together. Uh, Melanie, how long many years have you sung on the tree? Um, 17, well, actually, it, it isn't 17. I've been singing with choir for 17. I missed one year. I was okay. out of town. But it has been mm -hmm. um, just a wonderful experience, mm -hmm. Jim. Mm -hmm. So much fun mm -hmm. through all the rehearsals yeah. that we yeah. have. And... Um, what can I say? Well, Just a wonderful it is. It's a neat thing. Yeah. Uh, we, we really consider it a gift to our community. Right. And yes. uh, we do that with a loving heart and with folks just come together and uh, come to our worship center. A uh, big structure that's right in the middle of the room that holds about 90 folks and then other folks off to the side. Uh, a full orchestra of professional players and our singers. Uh, every one of these folks are in this program, and it's just been a great time. And Tell you me. engage the audience in some we of do. the songs. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. During the, they love that. They <laughs> love to be part of the Christmas tree. Yeah. And then at the end, you engage them again. That's so right. they feel part of it. Well, and Very we much. want them to. Right. You know, there are a lot of... Uh, Christmas opportunities around, a lot of concerts, right. a lot of groups that come through. And, and people uh, think this is this is what sets yeah. their whole mm -hmm. theme exactly. of Christmas when exactly. they come to that's our... Right. Well, we hope yeah. that's the case. Yeah. We really try to make that happen. Yeah. 
Uh, our programs are uh, a kind of a variety of all kind of things, some mm -hmm. classics, uh, Christmas carols, some familiar, uh, more secular songs, but we always want to tell the story uh, about yeah. Christ being born yeah. and yeah. what right. that That's means right. to us. And I think we do That's that, right. yeah. and uh, we're so delighted that God has enabled us to have 50 years yeah, 50 to do years. this. Don't know yeah. how, you know how many more there are. There may be lots more. Uh, but at least uh, we're intending this year for the 50th anniversary of Christmas tree uh, to be just a great experience for us and for you at home. I hope that you will plan to join us uh, in person on December 12th, 13th, and 14th as we have these programs at our church. Uh, we will have this again on, uh, on Channel 38, Christmas Eve and uh, uh, Christmas Day. We'll, pro we'll play a program mm -hmm. back of the, of the program. But uh, keep that in mind. And let me just say one other thing. If you know anybody in El Paso or your family, friends, anywhere that ever sang in the Christmas tree, we need to know where they are and how we can contact them. If you will call our church office and let us know, hey, I've got a friend or a cousin or a brother-in-law, whatever that's saying, and they'd like to know about this, uh, we'd like to hear from you. Our church number is 533-1465. And uh, so we would invite you to call talk to artists our secretary she also sings on the christmas That's tree right. and uh, we would uh, love to be able to contact them just as quick as we can we're going to have a great show this year and we're looking forward to it so thank you for being part of that thank you all bill and esther thank and you. dagmar and thank melanie for you. being here and uh, we hope you have a great day god bless you today and uh, we know god's going to honor your faithfulness and we thank him for first baptist church and allowing us thank to do you, the Jesus. same amen Thank you for watching United with Christ. We pray this has been a blessing to you, and we invite you to tune in again tomorrow. We invite your comments, questions, or prayer requests. You may contact us at KSE Christian Television, 2201 East Wyoming Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79903. Or call us at 915-532-8588 during regular business hours. Or you can visct our website at www.kscetv.com. God bless you.